Welcome to the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast with Ani and Brian. Join us as we explore the art and science of trauma-sensitive somatic practices and tools to strengthen your practice as a coach, therapist, or holistic professional. Master the art of motivating even the most challenging clients when you'll understand how to tap into and unlock your client's complete holistic intelligence. If you want to learn the most cutting edge, research supported skills for personal and professional mastery, you've come to the right place. Let's get this conversation started. Hi there, and welcome to the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast. This is episode 12. Hey there, Brian. Hey, Ani. How are you today? Hi. I'm feeling a little anxious. It's the new year. and mm, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like A lot I'm of stuff going on. Hoping we can do something about that today. Yeah. So maybe we could talk about the five key acupressure points for anxiety. I would love that, Brian. Okay. Hey, before we get into that, can we just talk a little bit about anxiety? Yeah, of course. Um. Here at the Somatic Coaching Academy, we don't actually talk about emotions as an emotion. We break down emotions into the base components of emotions and anxieties and emotions. So I thought we should just talk about that real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, who knows if your anxiety feels exactly the same in your body as my anxiety feels in my body. Yeah. Or if it even feels like the same all the time. Sure. I mean, anxiety can be different for each of us at different times. Uh, Context plays a huge role in um, sensation. I mean, so you could actually have, at least for me, I could have a very similar sensation. And depending on the context, I would call it two different things. Totally. So if I have in a certain context where there's a lot of things happening that I don't like, and I'm feeling overwhelmed by them, and I'm at a loss for my capacity to manage them and have a certain sensation in my body, I would call it anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's cool. So we take the emotion and we break it down into the base mm-hmm. components of an emotion, which are the sensations you feel in your body and the narrative or the story about the sensations that you feel in your body. Right. And that and that story can be pretty complex, right? yeah, which is a whole other podcast yeah. that we can get into. Everything that goes into that narrative is uh is too much to cover now because right now we're just talking about the five key acupressure points yeah yeah for anxiety yeah so okay so acupressure how do we do acupressure on ourselves well so a lot of this actually that we're going to talk about is um encapsulated in our core centering practitioner certification first i want to say so when someone goes through the core centering practitioner certification we teach a pretty robust section on acupressure for yourself and be able to teach your clients to do for themselves. And so acupressure is really, think about acupuncture, acupressure. So acupuncture, when you go to an acupuncturist, they use a acupuncture needle to put into acupuncture or pressure points that are all over the body, right? There's, um, depending on who you read, right? There's some say there's like, you know, 360 points. Other people say there's thousands of points all over the body, depending on who you're reading in terms of these acupressure points. Now, acupressure points and acupuncture points are the same thing. One you're doing with acupuncture, which is needle. The other one you're doing with acupressure, which is with your finger. Right. So we could do acupressure on somebody or we could do acupressure on ourselves Mm -hmm. And part of the key delineation here at the Somatic Coaching Academy is that we're not hands on with people. So we're not going to do acupressure on other people. Right. But we can teach people to do acupressure on themselves. Absolutely. Super, super helpful. And yeah. Handy. So when we go back to anxiety for a second, and we kind of started asking ourselves yeah. about can we talk about anxiety? And we talked about the emotion and breaking it into component parts. Well, what do we know are some features about? How do you, what's a kind of a a trend for people who say they have anxiety? Let's just kind of talk about it in a less specific, but in more global terms. And in in terms of what Chinese medicine would talk about it, because we're talking about acupressure, we're really coming at this from a Chinese medicine framework. So maybe we should just kind of talk about it with that lens to, to kind of pull it together a little bit. So in Chinese medicine, anxiety is said to be an energy that rises in the body 
So for most people that I've worked with and for myself who experience anxiety, whatever you call that sensation, the energy pattern in the body tends to be very high in the body. So as energy rises in the body, there's a lot of energy in the head. And so when there's a lot of energy, wherever there's a lot of energy in the body, there's going to be more activity in that part of the body. And so when energy rises in the head, there's more activity in like thinking, really thoughts, ruminating. People do say that a lot with anxiety is the the thinking just won't stop. I can't stop thinking about it. Yeah. And it seems to create like a hamster wheel kind of effect mm -hmm. with the sensations they feel in their body. <laughs> yeah. I also hear a lot of people describe it and I I would concur when I experience anxiety is like it's usually in the chest and above. Mm -hmm. It's like above above the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have a little solar plexus stuff going on, but a lot of times it's like chest and above. Yeah. Ears ringing is another one, like tinnitus where you get ringing the ears, like um, dry mouth, uh, where you get like that copper kind of feeling in your mouth. Because it's like a lot of stuff is happening. You have racing heart. Dizzy. Shallow breath. Yeah. Can't really focus the yeah, eyes. Eyes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one too. Um, you know, and it's interesting if anything does happen in the gut for people, in my experience with anxiety, it's actually what's happening is the gut kind of empties itself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, when they have anxiety, they have gut issues, but the gut issues are kind of like um, an emptying response. Mm -hmm. so Rather like, than a holding on. Oh, you mean? Yeah. So it's almost like the gut's trying to like get out of the way as the energy rises up in the rest of the body. Do you sure. know what I mean? Sure. And just to say, as coaches, we're not diagnosing anybody with anxiety, but how many times as a coach or whatever kind of practitioner you are, do you have people come into your office and say, I feel anxious or I have anxiety? Yeah. Right. So people are self-identifying with something like anxiety all the time. Yeah. So when people come in like and say, I'm having anxiety or I feel anxious, it, for us, it's kind of like just a, a clue of some more questions to start asking. Yeah. And from a coaching perspective, we know that when somebody's stressed out, their frontal lobe isn't online mm -hmm. and they really can't think clearly. And so if somebody's anxious and we don't deal with that, if they're having anxiety and we don't do something, then we're not really getting anything done. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right? As a coach, we're not really getting anything done. Yeah. So helping somebody to tackle that and having the tools to be able to do that, like the core centering tools are so awesome because it doesn't, it doesn't have to take a whole session anyway, by the, by the way. Yeah. It can you be know? really quick. It can be really quick, yeah. help somebody get back in their window of tolerance and ready to do coaching. Yeah. So let's help people get centered like right off the yeah, bat. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about the next so, pressure points. Yeah. So what pressure points release anxiety, Brian? Well, um, if we go back to this idea of an idea that energy is rising up in the body, then one of the points that I really like to work with right away for people is to help get their energy just back down in the body. And that's kidney one point. So kidney one is right on the bottom of the foot. And it's also called bubbling spring. I love the names that go along. With yeah, spring. they are really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Bubbling yeah. springs. Bubbling springs. So it's right on the bottom of the foot. Bottom, right on the bottom of the foot. So Ani's going to show us on the bottom of her foot right here. And so it's right in the middle of the bottom of the foot of the arch. And that is the kidney one point. And it's a primary point of what we would call yin energy or the energy of the earth or the ground. So when we stimulate that point on the bottom of the foot, it activates or opens up the portal for grounding energy to yeah. come in. Oh, which feels so good, like you said, to bring that energy down. Right. So just from the just from the standpoint of if energy is overloaded in the top of the body, then if we can help draw some of that energy back down, just using acupressure on the bottom of the foot, that can feel very grounding for somebody. So just pulls it pulls it back down again. You're doing it right now, right? I am. John is doing a little I'm acupressure. Doing She's doing it right now as we're on a podcast. And this is how easy it is to do. Or you can be on a call or whatever, a Zoom, whatever it is. And you could be doing acupressure on your foot while you're I've totally talking. used this one. I've used this one when I'm like in a meeting or at a conference. I'm sitting down for a long time. It's really easy to take your shoe off and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, I mean, we do some of that stuff in core center. You can use a ball or something like that. Sure, yeah. Ah, that feels so good. Like you said, just to notice the energy going down. Yeah. So when it comes to helping anxiety, um, I'm going to just say this too about acupressure. So acupressure, if you kind of look up um, techniques or the definitions of how-tos about acupressure, typically you're using like a deep pressure 
on the area, like a moderate to heavy pressure on the area that um, is probably slightly uncomfortable, but not, we wouldn't call it painful. For me, it's like an ooh rather than an ouch. Yeah. Like, you know, when you press, like right now for me, I'm pressing on my foot and it's like, ooh, yeah, that's the spot. Yeah, that's the spot. That's the, right, that's the mm -hmm. correct pressure. Yeah. It's not an Oh, ow, ow. Yeah. And we're normally, and we're normally doing that pressure for about 30 seconds to two minutes. That's kind of a, a typical acupressure kind of protocol. Now with that said, what we teach our students are the eight different um, ways to do manual work on yourself, right? There's eight different ways to do. And four of those ways are what we call stimulating and four of them are inhibiting. So four are yang techniques and four are yin techniques. And or so and we could say that four kind of bring you up yeah, and four, four kind of calm you down. Right. And you can use those four techniques on every one of the acupressure points, which means you have multiple recipes that you can do for yourself, depending on what you have going on or what your clients have going on. So what we're doing today is just sharing you a basic, the standard kind of vanilla, Points. really good foundational technique, which is moderate to heavy pressure on the point for 30 seconds to two minutes to get an effect in that area. If you want to learn more of those recipes and stuff like that, we do that in core centering. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next point I really like to do is also on the foot and it's called the, it's the um, liver three point. And it's, uh, it's also kind of called the frustration point. Big, it's also called the bigger rushing. So a lot of these have different names, but the kind of the, um, the uh what do you call it the um slang for it is frustration point the slang, the yeah. slang name for it is frustration point so it's right on the top of the foot and if you put your index finger between your first and second toes I'm doing it right now and you just oh. drag drag your finger right onto the from the space between the first and second toes onto the top of the foot just barely out of the top of the foot between those two long bones we call the metatarsals in the foot, you'll find a spot between those two bones that is usually highly sensitive. That's why I was trying to show us right there with their excellent flexibility here on the chair. And that spot is usually pretty hot, kind of spicy, yeah. spicy spot. And so oftentimes anxiety is associated with a sense of frustration and feeling kind of wound up or things are out of control. Like unable to really be empowered in a situation. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great spot to hit. Right. And, and I like to do a little growling when I'm on it too. So I'll hit on the, ah, I like to kind of get right into it. This is, I think my favorite, I think this is my favorite point when our students discover it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we see them, you know, press in there and they're like, Oh, that's so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. So great. So we have um, bigger rushing or frustration point on the top of the foot. We have bubbling spring underneath the foot. And just that heavy, heavy to moderate pressure in the area. Going to do the other side now, so get you balanced out on. I am, Brian. Yeah, it's great. It feels really good cool. to to want to. So yeah, do both, right? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, exactly. We're just so sitting here. You're just, we're just talking, right? We're just, just doing it. So you might as well, well. might as well do. It. Hope you're doing it too. Yeah. On the pad. Hope you're doing these acupressure points. All right. So now let's kind of start moving up the body. So I like to start down um, low to help kind of open up those yin portals to draw energy down and also allow some yin energy to come into the body, which just feels very grounding and very settling. Right? Opening up my yin portal. Opening up your yin portal. I feel like Yoda. Yeah. It's like having some really good soup, <laughs> like some really good, rich, hearty, warming soup. Okay. As we come up now, another couple of points um, that I really like is right, actually, oh, that called is the, so good. the sea of tranquility point, <laughs> yeah. conception vessel 17. And it's right in the middle of the sternum. And I like to just take um, put two, you know, put my backs of my, take both my hands, hands, hands. <laughs> take your hands. Take my hands. Take my hands. Put put the my fingers, the backs of my fingers together. And then take like my fingertips. Yeah, like little C's. And take my fingertips then and just point them into the center of my sternum. And just nice, nice, deep, deep, deep pressure in there. Ah, and this, some really nice company by a, uh, a sigh is really great. On purpose. Yeah. Sigh on a purpose. Sigh on purpose is really great. And then there's this other little trick you can do too, actually. Let's do it. That if you take the acupressure direction and you point it down a little bit, 
it'll take, again, it'll kind of feel like you're sinking the energy downward. <laughs> contrasted by, you might just try this, contrasted by if you took that and pointed up. Yeah, it's different. Doesn't it feel different? Yeah. Like pointing up actually is like, whoa, Wee. kind of wakes the system up a little bit. Where if you take that pressure and you push it down, it feels very settling to do that. Mm. Right. So that's, it does. It feels different. That's a great point. Yeah. Really great for calming the mind, opening the heart, calming the spirit. So sea of tranquility. I'm sure if you're listening or watching, you're trying these with us right now. I hope you are. Yeah. Like, do you feel different than when you started the mm, podcast? Yeah. I do. I feel great. Hopefully, you're still awake. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because we still have two more points to do. <laughs> All right. So uh, um, another uh, couple of points that for me go right along with this sea of tranquility point are kidney 27 oh, points that one too. called elegant mansion. And it's uh, if you go to the the most medial end of your, which is like the, the, the inside, inside end of your collarbone, and you just kind of uh, drop down about two fingers width or so. It's like if I was to draw a line down my neck, right under my collarbone. Yeah, right under the collarbone, it's right there. And so that is kidney 27 point. So this one, I like to actually, I like to cross my hands to do it. Yeah. It feels a little better for my wrist. Too, you know, I think for me, my, um, my chest muscles relax a little bit mm. more when I do the hand crossing. Yeah. Little hand crossing. And, and then of course you can press, you press in. Right, you press in and then you can do that down thing too. Yeah. We're kind of like just hooking downward. Ah, of course, crossing the arms also, you know, there's some feature around kind of uh, cross education happens here too. So a lot of times in anxiety, right? The one side of our brain gets overloaded and we totally. lose connectivity through the corpus callosum to be able to process what's going on. Yeah. So, and so just by crossing hands, we'll do that. Right. So uh, another way to say that in terms of how I would think about it with my clients is when somebody comes in, they can be really um, hyper-focused mm. and polarized and like, you know, the blinders are on about whatever their experience. It's always like this. It's never like this right now. It's the only possibility is this. And so bringing in both sides to the brain actually allow us without doing anything or saying anything or asking any questions to invite both sides of the brain to get online. Mm, yeah. Ah. All right. So there's another great That's point right nice. there. Feeling really settled down, right? That's good. Okay. So now the, the next and last point that we're going to talk about is a pretty popular point. And it's large intestine four. And it, it's right, it's also called Union Valley. Probably got some other names too. But it's in the web space between the thumb and the index finger. Yeah, so people ask us sometimes why squeezing the thumb releases anxiety. Mm -hmm. And it's not actually the thumb, it's, it's here in the middle. Yeah, yeah, it's right in the web space of the thumb. So this spot is really kind of like an energetic um, switching board for the whole upper limb, like the whole, like the hand and the forearm and the arm and the neck and the jaw and helpful with um, headaches and that kind of stuff. I will say though, yeah. too, you know, if you're pregnant, don't press this don't if you're press on the spot if you're pregnant. Yeah. This okay? is like a, a place where uh, like a, re a release place. So don't release. Yeah. Unless you are in overdue. labor, yeah. yeah. If you if yeah. you're in labor or overdue, then go to town on this spot. Go ahead. It can actually help relieve labor pains and can help with uterine contractions, get stuff moving. So if you're before that, then don't press, don't press on this spot. Metaphorically, you know, if you think about it with anxiety, you might a question that you might a coaching question you might ask is, what do I need to let go of mm -hmm. in this circumstance? And this is the uh, body. It's not a metaphor. We're actually doing it. Like this is the letting go point. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, right. So this is large intestine, right? Yeah. So that large intestine is the part of your body that lets, lets go, go of stuff. Of waste. It's a great question, Ani. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. like, that's a really insightful question to ask like when you're working out with people and actually have them do an acupressure point. And press the point. Right. While they're, while they're doing that or, or in preparation for it mm -hmm. sort of thing. You know, and then as we talk about this, people are like, okay, so 
I'm pressing on these points. They they feel better. Like I feel better. And for some people, it's like, hey, that's enough. Like I'll, that's all I need to know. Like I press on these points, I feel better. Off you go. Some people don't even that's remember great. what was bothering them. Yeah, that's really really good. Now for me, that's not enough. I need to know why. Like I always am like, okay, so that, that worked, that worked, that was great, but why? Like what, what is actually going on in the physiology? Like what's actually happening? Well, we do know. Um, that we're releasing the chi. <laughs> releasing I mean, the come chi. on. That's what around. I want to know. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that is one thing that's happening. And that it's magic. <laughs> yeah, it's mad. that is magical. So, <laughs> all right, all right. We, well, you know, from Chinese medicine, you're right, Ani. The reason, the theory behind acupuncture and acupressure in a lot of ways is that we are like an energetic circuit board and our bodies, we do have energy that circulates through our bodies. And we're not talking about some metaphysical, weird, strange energy, but we're talking about bioenergy. We're talking, your body has electricity associated with it. And if you're like questioning that, like, have you ever heard of an e, you know, EKG, an electrocardiogram? Like we all know your heart gives off electricity when it beats EEGs. We know we have brain waves that can be measured by electricity. So our bodies have electricity circulating through them. Now, the kind of electricity that we're talking about with acupressure isn't really the same as with EGs and EKGs, but let's just go with that for a moment. So we have energy circulating through the body and the energy is circulating through what the Chinese would call meridians. And these are pathways, these are conduits that move through our connective tissue through our system. So slow down there for a second, because that's a part that a lot of people are like, yeah, 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 I get it. Energy moving through meridians, those invisible lines on yep. my body. No connective tissue. Yeah. So just talk for a second about that. Well, so connective tissue is the most ubiquitous tissue in our body. We're more connective tissue than anything else. And inside of our connective tissue, we have things like our nervous system, our brain and our nerves. And, and but even our nerves are, are lined with connective tissue and our blood vessels are lined with connective tissue and our muscles are in through and around with, with connective tissue, right? We're all connective tissue. And through the connective tissue, we have these kind of tunnels. And through those tunnels is where the chi would flow what yeah. the Chinese would call the chi. And um it's uh I just think that's we're just important. gonna call it bioenergy for, right. for our sake. Actually we'll call it chi because it's fun to call it chi. Okay. It's just more fun to say chi than bioenergy. It is. Okay. But chi bioenergy, we're basically talking about the same thing. So the chi is meant to circulate through the electrical grid of your body. Yeah. Now the more openly and freely and kind of the more flow that that electricity has through your electrical grid, the healthier you are. Almost like if you think about an electrical grid for a city, a city has an electrical grid. If energy is flowing in and through that grid to all the houses and all that kind of stuff, hey, pretty healthy electrical grid. Now, if all of a sudden in the electrical grid in the city, you have some transformers that shut down. And so now some places um, aren't getting enough energy. <laughs> we were actually um, oh, yeah. recently watching uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And there's a scene where Clark Griswold <laughs> like lights up his house with all like 10, 25,000 light bulbs or something. <laughs> yeah. And the whole rest of the city drains yes. down. Yeah. It goes dark yeah. sort of thing. So <laughs> that, well, that's actually how it happens. So when we experience anxiety, it's like Clark Griswold's house on your head, just like like 50,000 light bulbs kind of activate and the rest of your body goes and shuts, right? Shuts down. Now the grid is out of balance. And when something's out of balance, that's what we would call dis-ease. And in this case, there's just way too much energy in one part of the grid. So when we do acupressure on ourselves on these points, these points are um, points of what we call low uh, electro impedance resistance into those areas. What that basically means is they're like switching boards, essentially. They're like switches for your electrical grid. So when you're pressing on these acupressure points, you're you're switching the grid and rebalancing your system. If you want to just think about it from a bioenergetic standpoint, that's what I wanted to know after I learned about acupressure and it felt good. And I was like, well, why does it work? I need to why? know more. I need to know yeah. why. So that's my quick version. It's, it's a little more complex than that. Again, we go into that deeper in core centering, but I wanted to be able to share that little bit with you in case you are a, a squirrel like me that you need, that's looking for more information they can know. store away someplace. <laughs> so uh, some people want to know what not to do when they feel anxiety, right? Uh, yeah, right. That's great. So what, yeah, what not to do when people experience anxiety. So would you have some favorites? Well, I, I just think it's it's interesting because when we feel anxiety, we talked about how it's the energy, you know, rising and a lot of 
mental mm -hmm. energy. What a lot of people do is try to solve their problems or they run around like trying to like fix it, fix it, fix it so that it will go away. But that's more of this like spinning mm -hmm. energy. And I, I know, you know, I can think of times for myself when I was in that place and I tried to actually like fix the problem. I'm creating other problems on the way. I'm like a, a Tasmanian devil. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, so, and there's something to be said if there's an actual if there's an actual life threatening emergency fire. Like, sure, actually, sure. you know, then we're not experiencing anxiety actually because we're, we're actually in action. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and actually, that's a I, that's a really good point. I have I have worked with some clients who needed to make a distinction for themselves between anxiety and panic brain mm -hmm. because there was actually life threatening things around or happening. And that's different That's it, that because we do need to be in action and do something. A lot of times when people are, are in anxiety, the most prudent thing to do would be to calm down. Mm -hmm. So just consider what not to do in anxiety might be to go and try to fix all the things that you perceive are the problems. One of the things we like to say at the academy is the problem is never the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, so getting yourself calm in your nervous system actually will allow you to tackle what's actually going on. Yeah. It should be really helpful. Yeah. You know, another thing not to do when you're experiencing anxiety is basically picking up on kind of what we're talking about, Ani, is when you're in anxiety, it's because there's a, there's a looming concern, right? There's a looming threat that we don't feel like we have control over. We can't do something about like we're waiting for the tax bill to come sort of thing. Oh my God, I'm waiting for the taxes to come. I don't have the money in the bank. The taxes are going to come and it's maybe two months away. And we're freaking out about the taxes coming two months away, right? And that's creating anxiety. I could hear the anxiety in your voice because it got higher. Got it, right. <laughs> so, so that's one, that's not one way to tell people are anxiety, right? So but here's, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, here, here's the other interesting thing is like once um, once the the action step is is offered and people get into action, there's no more anxiety, right? Because we're either we're taking care of the we're taking care of the actual issue that's going on, and when we're in, it's very difficult to be in action and have anxiety at the same time. So it's almost like s that solutioning the actually in action to solve the problem, not just mentally thinking about it, but physically in action to solve the problem. Yeah. Actually engaging with it, we're actually engaging your body would reduce anxiety. So this is what I've seen some people do when they experience anxiety because it feels better to be in action. Is what not to do when you're experiencing anxiety is to create a problem that then you have to solve. So I've seen people who experience like a mental problem. Well, no, people who create like a relationship problem. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. They create a problem. They create a problem yeah. because then they'll have a problem to solve. Yeah, and it feels better to be in action than in anxiety. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's a pattern for people. I've seen this over and over again to be in some kind of either drama or when our nervous systems are used to being in hypervigilance, we won't cue in that that's what's going on in our nervous system. We'll say to ourselves. Why is there always trauma around me? Why is there always dramatic people? Why is there always a fire to put out? You start with your nervous system. You can shift those patterns, but our nervous systems are actually used to being in those hypervigilant states. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we've been conditioned that way for yeah. sure, Yeah, for sure. So instead of doing all those things when you're experiencing anxiety, instead of giving the mental energy power and trying to solve it and trying to figure it out rather than creating some other problem that then you could engage with in a functional way that had nothing to do with your anxiety to begin with, rather than doing those things, why not do some acupressure for it? You know, another thing people say that they do, Brian, is they go exercise. And I'm not saying don't go exercise, but kind of a good, better, best exercise is a great way. And you're engaging your, your body and one of the things I've seen is people need to be in the exercise and you can't exercise in the meeting or you can't, there's a lot of places where you can't just like go for a run. And so their anxiety comes up and they're like, I just have to go for a run. So these, these kinds of tools can help you anywhere, anytime also exercise, but to really be empowered to take care of your nervous system is tools like these, the core centering kinds of tools that allow you to just mm -hmm. anywhere, anytime, be able to get your nervous system in alignment. Right. Yeah. So acupressure is just one component of our core centering methodology. There's one part of a hub, if you will, of 
techniques, of strategies, of, of tools. Somatic practices are really what we call them, right? Um, just a hub of those somatic practices that when you do them regularly, not only do you create a more resilient nervous system for yourself so that you're less likely to experience anxiety, but you also have a great number of first aid tools in order to help ground yourself, feel more settled, feel more present, feel more centered when life shows up as very challenging. Yeah. So if you want to know more about the core centering program, go to our website, somaticcoachingacademy.com, click on programs. And then as you scroll down, you'll notice the core centering certification. Core centering is the green program on our website. You'll be able to recognize mm -hmm. that. Also, if you want to try some more core centering with us, whether you want to do that through YouTube, because we have a bunch of core centering practice sessions on YouTube, you can also go to our website and in the top menu there where it says library, click on that. If you already have your library card, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't have your library card yet, click on library. You'll be able to get your library card and that gives you access to our very extensive library of all kinds of cool things. And there's videos and there's pod the podcasts and articles and basically everything we do goes into the library as a repository. And as a library card holder, you'll find out about those things when they go into the library. So you don't have to look all over. But in terms of core centering, go into the library, scroll down to the bottom where there's a section you can search for things. There's actually a core centering section. And whenever we do a core centering practice for the public, it's there. So you'll be able to, mm -hmm. to do some of those with us and uh, they feel really awesome. As a matter of fact, Brian, I think I will uh, do a little bit more core centering with myself right now as we close out the episode today. <sighs> that feels really good. <laughs> I hope you liked it. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode. We hope that this conversation will help you improve your practice and change the way you think about your work, your clients, and yourself. Continue your exploration of trauma-sensitive somatic coaching by listening to more podcast episodes at somaticcoachingacademy.com. You could be the trusted guide that people turn to to help them with their most challenging situations and to reach their most precious goals. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.